This is a biblical study into when does a day start. An examination primarily into when the Sabbath begins. This is not a 12 hour Sabbath study nor lunar Sabbath study. This is not meant to be contentious or cause division. For most of us Messianic believers have all come out from one form of Christianity or another. And each of us are walking in the light we've received. If we are seeking, he says, we will find. And he will reveal himself to those who show their love to him by keeping his commandments. John 14, 21. Most of us who have come out from Christianity, following traditions of man and honoring the first day of the week, rather than the seventh day, look to Israel to seek the Jewish roots because we assume they are keeping the first covenant to the letter. What we really find is that the Israelites of today have their own traditions, which according to Talmud are above scripture. Some of the traditions within Judaism are simply inherited from the pagan nations that they were assimilated into during the exile in Babylon and Assyria. Some of these traditions include naming months after false gods, Tammuz, Nisan, Siwan, etc., replacing the name of Yahweh with Adonai or Elohim, etc. It should come as no surprise because Yahshua himself saved some of his most scathing rebukes for the so-called experts in the Torah. The Israelites also had an earlier form of writing, the Paleo-Hebrew, which changed to the Babylonian style of modern Aramaic we know today. The truth is that there is only one truth. John 17:17 17, 17 says, Thy word is truth. So there's no point in looking to others to find how to please Yahweh. He has given us the truth in his word. For the Jews, the Sabbath traditionally starts at evening, when the sun has gone down, and ends 24 hours later, this is what a number of messianics follow in regard to the Sabbath. Let's examine the scriptures to see where the truth lies. The best place to start is at the start. So, what does the creation in Genesis reveal? Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, Elohim created the Shamaim and the earth. And the earth came to be formless and empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. And Elohim said, Let light come to be, and light came to be. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness, and Elohim called the light day, that's Hebrew yom, and the darkness he called night. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, day one. Please note, the light was not the sunlight for the first three days, this is a picture of Yahshua, the Messiah, in the earth. John 12.46 reveals, I am come as a light into the world. We know that that light, or Yahshua, was the first creation. For in Colossians 1, verse 15 to 17, it records, Who is the likeness of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of all creation? Because in him were created all that are in the Shamaim, and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through him and for him, and he is before all, and in him all hold together. Note, in Hebrew, the word light is or or yom. Darkness is night, which in Hebrew is laila. Evening, erev, morning, boker. First, Echad. Hebrew is cyclical rather than linear thinking. Erev means a mixing or a blending. You can't have it without both light and darkness, which means the light must have been there prior to the darkness. Morning, which is Boker in Hebrew, is a breaking, a dividing, a separation, or delineation or demarcation. All was stated as happening in order. Then Boker occurs, and that was the Echad, or unified day. This is not the word Rishon for first. Therefore, the translation, day one, is more accurate than the first day. So, to simplify all the above, the daylight part of a 24-hour period is called day, in Hebrew, Yom. Evening is Erev, the mixing of the light and darkness after sunset. Morning is Boker, the break of the day, which is 
the sun breaking the horizon. Note that it is true that yom can mean an undefined period of time unless it is defined as it is in the Genesis account. There came to be evening and there came to be morning. This account of day one is no different than describing the age of a child. You are not truly one year old till you have lived a whole year. Genesis describes the events that take place during the daylight period, then night comes, then morning, and is called the first day. The six-day creation defines for us when a day starts. In the beginning, there is nothingness or darkness. Then Elohim creates light and calls it day, yom. That is the start. The scriptures state that evening came, then morning, or the start of the next day. That was the first day. The creation process continues like this for six days. Daylight period, or yom, is the creation period, then evening, then morning. It's really that simple. A day is morning to morning. At the end of the six days of creation, we read Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Thus the Shamaim and the earth were completed, and all their array. And on the seventh day, Yom, Elohim completed his work, which he had done, and rested on the seventh day, Yom, from all his work, which he had made. And Elohim Baruch the seventh day, Yom, and Kadosh it, because on it he rested from all his work, which Elohim in creating had made. So to clarify when a day starts, Scripture informs that Elohim rested and blessed the seventh daylight period, not the sixth night. Please note that it is not saying that a day is 12 hours. A full day, according to the creation account, is defined as 24 hours starting in the morning. If you believe that the statement there came to be evening and there came to be morning, the first day supports a day beginning the evening, then you must believe that a day is only 12 hours, for evening to morning is only 12 hours. But as we see from scripture, this is not the case.